Hi, I'm Catherine Sheldon, and I am an English Lit grad student at Cal State Stanislaus. Today, I'd like to present a paper entitled From Belfast to Berkeley, Seamus Heaney in a Divided World. Heaney was an Irish poet who had the unique position of being on the front line in two of the world's most tumultuous environments of the late 1960s, early 70s. In 1970, Heaney would leave his home in Northern Ireland to serve as a visiting professor at Cal. Both Belfast and Berkeley were awash with political demonstrations, often ending in violent confrontations. Heaney would use these two locales as a backdrop to hone his poetry. The time spent in California presented an exposure of unrest over issues different from those in Ireland, yet comparable in terms of the manifestation of the unrest. I contend that the year at Berkeley afforded Heaney with a nuanced perspective that poetry could reflect the emotions caused by the conflict without descending into dissent. Inflammatory rhetoric was not a given. Poetry could be inspirational yet still address concerns. Heaney's third collection of work, Wintering Out, was published in 1972 and is reflective of his experience at Berkeley. We'll focus on the final poem, Westering, as an indication of Heaney's perspective on these tumultuous times. As a Catholic in Northern Ireland, Heaney was in a tenuous position. Although he was fiercely political in his personal views, Heaney realized that combining politics and poetry could be problematic. By the late 1960s, Heaney was highly resentful of the British government's actions. However, with the explosion of violence in Belfast, he was growing increasingly disillusioned with the tumultuous role of the nationalists. While recognizing the afflictions caused by the British colonial system, Heaney also acknowledged that he had a debt and an obligation to that very system. As a poet writing in English and as a university professor, teaching English literature, disposing of the English culture would be difficult. At Berkeley, Heaney found a comparable situation of the Irish unrest with the American Black, Latino, and Native American movements. The United States was also awash in anti-war protests. Heaney recalls the 1960s American evolution of cultural experimentation in style, music, hair length, politics, and sexual mores. During this philosophical pilgrimage, Heaney's ponderings echo those of the San Francisco Beat Movement a decade earlier. Certainly, Heaney's time at Berkeley and his association with the San Francisco poetry scene would be indelibly reflected in his third collection. As an outsider, Heaney could see that the American dream was under assault and the associated discord would be captured in wintering out. The final poem of Heaney's 72 collection was initially titled Easy Rider, Westering, a nod to the 1969 film of the same name. This landmark counterculture film served as a generational touchstone. In this poem, which may have been written when Heaney first arrived in Berkeley, the poet writes with an eerie sense of premonition. Like Heaney, the speaker in the poem is on his way to a residency in Berkeley and exploring changes in the societal landscape. Western in California. I sit under Rand McNally's official map of the moon, the color of frog skin, its enlarged pores open. Recalling the last night in Donegal, my shadow, Summer had been a free fall ending there, the empty amphitheater of the West, Good Friday. Amy is recollecting the solemnity of Good Friday. The entire world slows down for reflection. Businesses close at midday, churchgoers attend silent services where there's no music, no conversation, the Greek theater at Berkeley is empty and silent. Thoughts reverberate and time seems to stand still. The world pays homage remembering the crucifixion. We had started out 
past shop blinds drawn on the afternoon, cars stilled outside still churches, bikers tilting to a wall under the moon's stigmata. The moon's craters here represent and symbolize Christ's wounds amidst a barren and still landscape. The poem concludes on a poignant note. 6,000 miles away, I imagine untroubled dust, a loosening gravity, Christ weighing by his hands. Heaney may be referencing the ongoing struggles in Ireland or imagining his homeland without conflict. The moon with its untroubled dust evokes a peaceful image of the great unknown. The loosening gravity references Christ on the cross as the weight of the body begins to sag. The imagery of Christ provides an allusion to redemptive suffering and speaks to the martyrdom of a guilt-free innocent. The loosening gravity may be the catalyst to bring about an, an eventual untroubled dust. While an ocean away, Heaney cannot escape the ensuing escalation of violence at home or abroad. Wintering out while avoiding stark politicization carries a stigma of responsibility and a lonely sense of isolation. In a marked departure from Heaney's first two collections, the tenor of wintering out is dispirited and contemplative with the very title hearkening the opening line from Richard III. In an interview Heaney gave after the publication of Wintering Out, he explained the book's title as a gesture toward the distresses in Ireland, comfortless with an underlying theme of survival. His hope that the destructive old passions pervasive in 1970 Northern Ireland might eventually result in a benevolent future of reconciliation. The collection is an homage to the landscape, culture and traditions of his homeland. Heaney was able to tap into disparate beliefs and emotions to find open and common ground. Although Berkeley and Belfast were vastly dissimilar with entirely different issues at play, Heaney would find consistencies through language, myth, and tradition. While wintering out may appear bleak at a cursory level, the sense of a spring rebirth can be found throughout the collection and the potential for a glorious summer. Thank you.